Topographic maps are printed at many different scales and they contain a lot of information. In addition to latitude, longitude, and elevation, they also show you what is the magnetic declination for the map area. Before we discuss the practical issues of declination when you're using a compass for navigation, let's think a little bit about the magnetic field of the Earth. You may have seen the experiment in which iron filings are sprinkled around a bar magnet to illustrate the so-called lines of force in the magnetic field surrounding the magnet. These lines of force curve around to connect the north and south poles of the bar magnet, and the strength of the field varies from place to place. Our planet has a magnetic field that looks very much like the field surrounding the bar magnet, with a north and a south pole. The Earth has a magnetic field because of the outer core, a layer made of liquid iron and nickel. This electrically conductive fluid is slowly moving as hotter material rises and cooler material sinks. This motion, called convection, along with the rotation of the Earth as it turns every 24 hours, sets up a situation where we have moving electrical currents, and this produces a magnetic field. A floating arrow inside a compass will spin to align itself with the lines of the Earth's magnetic field, and that is how we can tell in what direction is north. Or at least, we can pretty much tell which direction is north. It's a little more complicated because the Earth's magnetic field varies both in space and in time. Geophysicists get a picture of what this field looks like by making measurements on the ground at magnetic observatories and also in space with satellites. The poles of the magnetic field pretty much align with the rotational axis of the Earth, that is, the line that goes through the geographic north and south poles, but not quite. The magnetic north pole currently is up there in the Arctic Circle close to the geographic north pole, but this map shows how much its position has moved over time. And that brings us to magnetic declination. If you're here at this white arrow up in Labrador, and you've lined up your map with due north, due north based on what your compass tells you, you will not be lined up with geographic north because your compass points to magnetic north. To orient the map so that geographic north is where it should be, you need to rotate the map a few degrees to point to geographic north instead. This number of degrees of offset is called magnetic declination. This angular relationship is going to depend on where you are. In the U.S. at the current time, in the eastern part of the country, like in the previous example for Labrador, your magnetic compass reading of due north will be 20 degrees or so less than it should be. That's called west declination. In the western part of the U.S., Corrections are positive for east declination. Many compasses have a screw built in that allows you to deliberately offset the compass dial by however many degrees you want. That way, you don't have to always remember to account for the declination when you use your compass. On USGS topo maps, the magnetic declination is always shown with this symbol to the left of the bar scale at the bottom of the map. The direction of geographic north is shown with the star and magnetic north is shown with MN. GN refers to grid north in the universal transverse mercator grid system, which we're not covering in this unit, so for now you can ignore that. In this example, for an area in Pennsylvania, it shows 9.5 or 9.5 degrees of west, that's negative declination, based on a 1976 magnetic survey. So you can always determine the magnetic declination by looking at a topo map. Or, you can go to the NOAA website, type in your location by zip code or latitude and longitude, and it will tell you what the declination is in that area. Just a quick note about magnetic inclination. Remember how the lines of force all came together and dived down to connect to the North Magnetic Pole? This means if you get very close to the pole, your compass needle won't lie flat inside the compass because it actually wants to point straight down into the ground. That's known as magnetic inclination and it's more difficult to account for. In fact, the colored areas on this map show the regions in the northern hemisphere where the inclination is so great that your compass is basically useless. And finally, here's a little thing that you can try at home if you like. You can make a compass with a bar magnet if it's free to float around and line itself up, line itself up with the Earth's magnetic field. Now, a magnet can't float, of course. It's too dense, too heavy but I have it sitting here on a little plastic tray that is free to move around 
on the surface of the water. Now I actually don't have a bar magnet, but this little array of stubby magnets all stuck together act just like a bar magnet, and I put a piece of red tape at the north end. Now the reason I know that's the north end is I tested it using this magnet that has the north and south labeled. So I know this is the north end because it's repelled by the north side of the magnet and it's attracted to the south side of this magnet. So the one with the red tape is the red, is the uh, north pole. So if I set this thing out here pointing, I know, away from the North Pole, and we wait and keep it from sticking to the sides, we ought to be able to see if it can rotate around and get in the right position. So it's turning first one way, now the other seems to be pointing that way roughly. If we let it sit still a longer time I think it would eventually point it north and you'll see, oops, there's too many magnets in here. If you're looking at this compass you can see that that is correct. That is the direction of north. So the little bar magnets work. And that is the end of this video on magnetic declination. Thanks for watching.